Historical Gamer once again, and today I'm going to be taking a look at a brand new game, it just came out today, and that game is called Cold Waters. Cold Waters is a real-time, I don't know if it's a strategy game or a, or a submarine simulation, um, I think it's got elements of both in it, and it's the newest game out by Killerfish Games, uh, who developed a game that I covered quite extensively on my channel, um, maybe a year or so ago, called Atlantic Fleet. Atlantic Fleet was a turn-based strategy game which put you in the shoes of either the Royal Navy or the German Kriegsmarine during World War II, uh, and allowed you to fight the Battle of the Atlantic. Cold Waters takes a very different approach. It puts you in the shoes of a uh, U.S. submarine commander uh, who is fighting in a hypothetical Third World War, which takes place in either 1960s or the 1980s, allowing you to play either a, believe it's a Skipjack-class sub in the 60s or a Los Angeles-class attack sub in the 80s. It's a real-time simulation, a real-time strategy game, although it doesn't seem to be quite in the vein of Silent Hunter. Uh, there is no, you know, internal uh, view of the sub, uh, which is kind of a little bit disappointing. I would have liked to see a little bit more fast attack in this. Um, and, you know, the, the way that you command uh, missiles and, and the like is um, very simple and, and intuitive. Uh, all, although the game is incredibly engrossing in the very little uh, time I've put into it. And when I mean very little, I mean I've played through a couple of the tutorials, and yet I can tell this is a game that will uh, likely be hooking me for quite many hours um, as well. So let's go ahead and take a look. We're going to be starting a campaign here. We're going to be playing North Atlantic 1984. Um, the other one is 1968, uh, which is... Well, let's take a look here. North Atlantic 1968. Overnight, the Soviet Union invades Czechoslovakia with a quarter million troops and 2,000 tanks to crush the reformist government there. Seeing the complete lack of response by America, bound down by fighting Soviet-backed forces in Vietnam, an emboldened Brezhnev regime decides the time is ripe to increase the sphere of communist influence in Europe. Their target? West Germany. Soviet naval forces still rely on re relatively obsolete surface warships, but cruise missile submarines are a threat to NATO convoys. So this is a 60s war gone hot while the U.S. is distracted in Vietnam. I believe the U.S. subs at this time actually still use unguided torpedoes. 1984 is, as tensions build along the Iron Curtain, the Warsaw Pact forces launch a devastating surprise attack against the Fulda Gap. Central Europe is plunged into war and NATO nations struggle to push back. Resupply convoys from the United States are crucial to the war effort and must be defended. NATO naval operations assign you, the Norwegian Sea and North Atlantic, in an attempt to maintain control of the situation at sea. So this one is more of a rehash of Red Storm Rising is kind of my understanding. I know Killerfish has kind of said this is the spiritual successor to Microprose's uh, Red Storm Rising, which I believe was based off the Tom Clancy book, uh, Red Storm Rising, which hypothetically was a 1980s Cold War gone hot. The Soviets take Nor or take Iceland, and um, you know the U.S. is fighting a series of battles to try and keep supply convoys going across the Atlantic to allow NATO forces to remain in supply. Uh, that is the campaign we're going to go ahead and give a look to. Sylvia, I have seen War of Rights. I have not played it much. I do have it, though. All right, so we're going to name our commander. What should we name our commander, guys? I'm open to suggestions. Uh, what do we want to call our hopefully famous uh, commander, although <laughs> in all likelihood soon to die skipper without uh, probably uh, achieving much glory? Alex, I'm not entirely sure uh, what the uh, Soviet perspective was on Fulda, if it was as extensive as the U.S. or not. Not going to name my, my Captain Stalin. Um, all right, we can go with the easy one. We'll just call myself the historical gamer. 
That's simple. Okay, so we uh, select our vessel, which appears to just be a selection of one. It is a Los Angeles class nuclear attack submarine. Uh, defensive weapons, none. That sucks. Dimensions, 6,900 tons. So this thing is huge. This is almost as large as a Burke class destroyer today. I want to say those are around 10,000 tons. It can make up to 33 knots, has a crew of 129, carries Mark 48 aid cap torpedoes. Those are wire guided torpedoes. Uh, I'm not sure if they're actually the aid cap version or not. Uh, Moss decoys, uh, UGM. M84, those are harpoon sea skimming anti ship missiles, which can be launched out of torpedo tubes. Uh, Tomahawk anti ship missiles and Tomahawk land attack missiles. That's TASM and TLAM missiles. Sensors, the BPS-15 search radar, uh, ESM mast mounted, so a radar on your mast, uh, an AN-8QQ5 uh, active and passive sonar, low medium frequencies, hull mounted, so hull mounted so uh, sonar, and then also a TB-16 active and passive sonar, that's a towed uh, sonar array, so basically it's a sonar that drops off the back of the sub and kind of hangs behind it as it as it goes. It gets away from the noise of the sub and allows it to pick up a little bit more uh, f sensitive noises. Later on, the Los Angeles uh, would be also fitted with the TB-32, I believe, uh, which was a more sensitive towed sonar array. Um, but the TB-16 would have been, I believe, the main sonar array at this time. Uh, notes, in service since 1976, this class was the first to be designed from the outset with a towed array, the first to return to the 30-plus speed knot of the skipjacks. Originally designed to screen carrier groups against Soviet submarines, they combine high speed with excellent digital sonar and fire control, and the most advanced quieting available, including anoic coating with the addition of harpoon and tomahawk missiles. These boats are capable against enemy shipping as they are against submarines. Their only drawback is their large size. That makes them very expensive and less maneuverable and deep diving than the earlier sturgeons. So the Los Angeles were very large subs. They were incredibly modern, and there are still quite a few of them around today, although they are being phased out and being replaced by Virginia-class subs. Uh, the Los Angeles class was the class in the uh, Tom Clancy book uh, SSN, that uh, almost Mary Sue submarine that wiped out the entire Chinese Navy, more or less, all by itself, uh, and yet I still found the book rather entertaining growing up. It was also the same sub uh, that the Americans ha featured in uh, The Hunt for Red October. The USS Dallas, for example, uh, was a Los Angeles class. The Los Angeles class was the most numerous class of fast attack submarines that the United States has ever fielded to this day. I believe there were 56 boats. If it wasn't exactly 56, it was 50-something. Okay, let's go ahead and accept. From Cub Saab Lant to Commander Historical Gamer, Info Sink Land Fleet. New combat assignment or command assignment. Effective immediately, or you are hereby assigned to Los Angeles class submarine USS Omaha SSN 692. Congratulations and good luck in your new command. So we regain contact on Sierra 2. Uh, we've got an enemy bear bomber in the air near us. Uh oh. Out to surface and not paying any attention to my boat. Yikes. Nobody see me. It's an Oodaloy destroyer. Good to know. And it's right on top of me. Can we submerge? I don't see any damage. Looks like we just barely stuck our head above the water. Oh boy. I hear a chopper. Oh, he's right on top of us. Ah! Hide. Oh god. Get the fuck underwater. I probably need some speed. <sighs> and there's a bear bomber. I'm sure he's dropping something on me. That's a torpedo, isn't it? I don't know how to fire a noisemaker, but those are multiple torpedoes if, if I don't. 
All right, I'm going to try and back up. Maybe they're too close to arm. Oh, God. This is going to be a short campaign. Yeah, I'm dead. <laughs> oh, that was embarrassingly bad. <laughs> hey, look, there's another torpedo coming in, guys. Oh, there's, there's like four more. <laughs> well, my incompetence. Hey, look, one missed. Nose no bound. <laughs> oh my god. Well, it would serve to learn how to play before I stream, probably. I don't think five torpedoes are surfaceable. In fact, I have no commands open to me, so... Can't abandon ship, I don't think. Yeah. A NATO spokesman has confirmed the Soviet claims that a U.S. nuclear attack submarine has been lost in action. Although details are uncertain, closest source to the Pentagon say loss of life was minimal. Most members of the crew have been safely recovered and are already ashore thanks to a determined rescue effort. Bullshit. The U.S. Navy continues to assess the effectiveness of its submarine and naval operations despite the risks maintaining control of the Norwegian Sea. And Atlantic remains the top priority. An undisclosed number of additional nuclear attack submarines have been dispatched to reinforce the recent loss. <sighs> wow. Well, I'm going to try again. All right, guys, do we wish to try that again? <laughs> I think so. I think we need to change our name, though, because naming it after ourselves just seems vain. And, and Although, can we continue? Like, did, did we lose the campaign? Because I think we lost the campaign. I'm not sure how that works, if you lose the campaign right away or not. Uh, we'll just call ourselves THG. Again, another Los Angeles class. This time we get the San Francisco. Okay. Hey, the Gipper! I'm gonna skip through all this stuff this time around. Oberkron, you can't play as the Germans. LA is boring. Okay, well, I, I'm not probably not a good enough player yet to play as anything else. I need all the sensors and stuff that the, the LA gets. Didn't sink though, right? All right, so intelligence discerned a pattern of movements of enemy at sea, replenishment tankers and tenders. So it's the same mission, replenishment tankers and tenders. So let's get out of sea out of Holy Loch and head uh, head toward the Barents. Hopefully we can do better this time. It appears we're the only submarine in the ocean. <laughs> Here we go. Spilt in Balk. We're going for you surface vessels. Err. Workers weak surface duct. Okay. There's a weak thermal layer at 154 feet. Good to know. It's close to 10 kilometers, but we're not going to surface like we did last time. Um So we've got 12 Mark 48 torpedoes, two mosses, eight harpoons, 20 noisemakers. No damage. Oh wow, it's shallow here. 
400 feet and we're almost on the ground. Yikes. All right, let's see what we've got. No contacts at the moment. Let's slow to one third and see if we detect anything. We should be relatively close. Still nothing now. If they are tankers or tenders, I guess I would expect to pick them up on my sonar. I don't see anything yet. Oh, new sonar contact. Designate Sierra 1. Sounds like there's some uh, sonar coming in off of it. Let's turn... Oh, we've got multiple sonar contacts now. Sierra 2 here is much closer. Again, we're at 400 feet, so we're relatively safe from breaching. <laughs> <laughs> Not relatively. We're very safe from breaching like we did last time. I'm going to turn toward them to close the distance. I'm going to keep speed at 5 knots. I'm going to try and stay slow to limit the likelihood that they detect us. Uh, another contact. So we've got three contacts going. I'm working under the assumption that um, given the fact that we are so deep that the sonar will be slightly less effective, effective being kind of muddied against the ground underneath us, Though that's not really backed up in any deep understanding of the game. That's just sort of an assumption that I have. Um, all right, we'll keep kind of going this way. I'm hoping my sonar can kind of start identifying these targets without me needing to surface to see them. Um, but we'll see. Hey, Rio Wilson, this is uh, Cold Waters. It's a new uh, submarine uh, simulation that just came out from the developers uh, King Killerfish Games, uh, who also developed Atlantic Fleet. It's a game that looks at a hypothetical World War III uh, that the U.S. Uh, would have fought against the Soviets and puts you in command of a single U.S. submarine during that war. We've currently got three contacts on map, and we are closing with one of them. We're at 400 feet so the likelihood of us, you know, being detected, I think, is less. Uh, we can see here if we if we look at the conditions, there, the floor is at 578 feet. There is a layer at 154 feet. We are below the layer, although it's a weak layer, uh, which means it's possibly less effective at shielding us. So if we can see here, we have three contacts right now. We've got Sierra 2, Sierra 3, and Sierra 1. I don't see the thing that the thing that's a little bit, um, I guess, difficult is it doesn't seem there's any sensor management in the game. This vessel is moving at 31 knots. Um, we know that our solution is at 41 percent. We're probably safe in firing on it, I would assume, uh, because my assumption is that it's a a surface vessel. We hit F3. We don't have any. I don't have any options to like see above. You can hit F3 or F4 to see like any air contacts or surface contacts, but I'm guessing when you don't really have any, uh, if when you're not sure what they really are, I suppose it probably doesn't let you see them, or if you don't have a visual, maybe. Okay, contacts here two is marking at. 15 knots now, so they're either slowing down or we're getting a better fix on them. They're about 5 kilometers out. Our solution's at 43%. Uh, their speed is, uh, or I speed is 5 knots. I don't have their speed or course. We are getting pinged by multiple sonars here, but I don't, I'm hoping they don't have a, a fix on us. Our uh, ambient noise is 81 decibels, which is good, is my understanding or should be relatively good. We have no damage. Again, I already checked our stores. Um, I think I'm going to load two torpedoes with Harpoon anti-ship missiles. hell is that? And they're shooting at me, so they do have a fix on me. There appear to be depth charges. We're kind of in close, too. All 
All right. Um, <sighs> so they know where I am. But I don't really know what to do about it. I don't want to fire a torpedo on a 47% solution. But that's what I'm going to do. Torpedo away. Firing torpedoes. Depth charges are damn close. That one was really close. No damage yet. Hull is at 88% though. They're starting to take a toll. That was really close. Surprised that's not... Oh, more. These are further away. Alright, so we've got a torpedo in the water. Kind of cruising toward CR2. Contact is 48% solution. Um... Gonna adjust its course a little bit. Alright. Sending that torpedo active, hoping it can pick up the target on its own. sure what that blinking means. Okay. Well, I hit something. Hey, we sunk something. So, I guess that was a good enough solution. You can see here we hit an enemy surface vessel. That was probably the guy who was bracketing us with those depth charges. So that was kind of a snapshot prey. But seems to have worked as he's uh, going down. Well, that was lucky. <laughs> huh. uh, all right, let's not do that again, though. That was he was bracketing us with depth charges, and we got up to eighty-eight percent. All right, so what are our other two targets? He's sinking. I don't think he's a. He's definitely going under. So I think I can figure out my contacts by scrolling through these different possible enemy contacts and kind of figuring out what the noise signature is. There you go. So apparently by doing this, I figured out this ship is a Grishin class, which I believe is kind of a, a fast gunboat type deal. His range is only four kilometers. His solution is 94%. So... I'm a little uneasy firing a torpedo at this thing. This is a fast mover, which makes torpedoes a little bit less effective against them. Um, they're very fast. Oh, shit. All right, so I was changing depth. Forgot about that. Oh shit, did I cut my torpedo tube wire? I don't think I can control him. God damn it. What did I load here? I 
I think I cut the wire on this thing. It doesn't seem to give me control over it. All right, so that makes sense. I suppose I probably was turning too sharp in order to, you know, to be able to maintain that um, contact, if you will, with the wire, which makes sense. It's actually kind of a cool feature. Uh, Fast Attack had that feature, where if you were turning your ship too quickly or if you were moving too fast, uh, you could actually, um, you know, cause your, your torpedo tube wire to, to break. All right, this guy's in too close to use harpoons on. That's I'm smart. So hopefully I can get a torpedo off against this guy. Kind of in really close to me, which makes him all the much more dangerous. See if we can identify this other target that's out here a bit further. All right. Match bearing and shoot. We've still got wires on him. I immediately went active because the range is so close. Wire break. Oh, shit. Hopefully my torpedo doesn't acquire me. Oh, there's the other ship that sunk. It's going pretty head-on to this ship, though. There! We got it! Alright, there's always the risk. Your torpedoes can actually come back and sink you as well. I've talked to a couple of people who have had that happen to them. Um, so that's another thing you got to be mindful of. Alright. Now we've just got one more target. That one l torpedo went long. Um, Got to figure out what type of ship this guy is. So the Grisha is dead. Guys, correct me if I'm wrong. Am I doing the right thing and kind of scrolling through things the way I am? To, to try and identify a target? It seems really close to, to whatever this ship is, though, in terms of the Duba, the Dubina, the Oiler. To me, it really looks a lot like that in terms of its pattern. Yeah, Ranger, it's hard for me to say. I'm literally like five minutes in and still... Not five, but I'm literally... What, an hour into playing this game? Just got myself embarrassed in my first run. Doing much better in my second run here. So far, I'm enjoying myself, but it's it's always a hesitance uh, to, to recommend something in when you've played it for like five minutes. Okay. I think it's probably the right ship. Now, I'm not sure. I identified the Grisha... But I'm not sure, is there anything I need to do, or do I just leave the profile on here in order to eventually hope it acquires the target? Or identifies the target. Donald, there is, I think, is it Skipjack, you guys? There's, there's another U.S. submarine that's in the game for the 60s scenario, and they are working on Soviet campaigns as well. So I don't know what subs they're intending to add, but there are subs other than L.A. or Akula. Return just jumps me into this. Oh, wait, that's not return. Okay, so classified as a Dubina. Our solution is still only 38%. And apparently I'm on the surface. I don't remember surfacing the boat. Shows my situational awareness. Or 
All right, let's put her back underwater a little bit. Let's get back up over 50 feet, though. I do want to see if we can get a visual on the thing. It is 18 kilometers away, so we may not be able to see it. <laughs> up scope, we're already partially surfaced. Not her. Can't tell. Alright, let's take her down just a little bit. Man, you really change depth slowly in this game. Oh, god damn it. Damage my periscope. Contact faded. I can try and slow down, but I'm I'm trying to stay slow so I can identify the target, but it is a ways out there. Donald, uh, the game is not playable against a human at this time. Oh, jeez, it's way out there. I can't fire the damn thing at 40 kilometers out. How fast is he moving? 16 knots? Alright, well, let's adjust and race after him, I suppose. We're going to lose contact and I'm going to cavitate, but I'm going to risk it. We can outrun him. If we so choose. You can see there's a little mark in the hole where the depth charges were hitting there. So oh, the damage on your ship does appear to be visible, just on one side too, and that is where the closest hit came. Nothing in sight. I'm just banking on the fact that there's not any more enemies. Okay, so I can't retrieve the periscope either. I can continue to use it, though. Harpoon will have the range, but I've only got a 40% solution, guys. I'm not sure if it'll hit. Um, and I thought Harpoon's range was about 40 kilometers, so I think I need to close a little bit more before, before firing. I want to get it under 38 kilometers. We'll toggle um, time compression. So you hit F9... And it'll actually compress time or accelerate time a bit. Also, theoretically, more time should give us the ability to, to get a better solution on them. So once I get under, let's actually say once we get under 30 kilometers, we'll fire the harpoon.
It'll broadcast my position, but I'm working under the assumption, and it may be a very invalid assumption, that these two Soviet escorts that I've already sunk are the lone Soviet forces in the area. I mean, I'm already pretty much on the surface, right? So... God damn it, I damaged my, my periscope again. Okay, so I did decrease depth a bit. So we can see that we're now below the surface ever so barely. I bent my periscope. I keep damaging it. Am I going too fast? Probably. But I can't I can't retract it because it's damaged, I think. Yeah, it doesn't let me retract it. Anyway, so now I got a 85% solution and I'm back above water again. Huh. Okay. I like to stay below. That is a pretty good solution, I think. 93%. I think that's going to be about as good as it's going to get. We're going to fire a harpoon. Let's uh, stop the... Okay, that seems. I'm sorry, but that seems like a bit of a glitch. I can't retract the periscope, and yet it keeps getting damaged. Maybe if I slow down, we can repair it. <laughs> okay, periscope no longer able to be repaired. Requires port. All right, but I can still see through it. <laughs> see. Not sure if that's the enemy transport or not. It won't let me lock a signal in on him. I think we probably got good enough. Gonna target a little bit short, I think. And torpedo. There goes the harpoon. There she goes. Let's see if she hits her target. I don't know if I can manually target this thing or not, or if I've just got to kind of hope it hope it hits. I have no visual on the enemy, though, apparently. I can't look at his ship. But we do see this is definitely flying straight and true towards something. So hopefully it, uh, it ends up hitting. It does look like it's going to. Boom! Now, does she take more than one harpoon, or is the single harpoon enough? The harpoon is a relatively light weapon, but it does appear that's going to be enough. She's settling in the water. She's burning. She is an oiler, I believe. So that would make sense that single 500... I think it only has a 500-pound warhead would be sufficient. Right in the ass. Down she goes. Oh, and look at that beautiful, beautiful oil spill. I mean, oil spills are not beautiful. But there is something, you know... Kind of cool that the game has that. See just the oil spreading out as the ship slowly goes under. Down she goes to the relatively shallow depth there. I think we're going to have to head back to port now, though. Okay, so leave combat area. No vessels nearby. We sunk an enemy Grisha, an enemy Kanin, and the Duban. So I believe we accomplished our mission. Good to hear you intercept and destroy the enemy replenishment resources. Keep up the good work. Further orders to be transmitted on the downlink. Await additional orders. Navy moves in. NATO warships and submarines have taken up several new strategic positions, including some around the Norwegian Sea, in response to significantly reduced Soviet naval activity. Sources close to the Pentagon say the war is taking a heavy toll on enemy naval operations and their supply lines contain, continue to be heavily strained. Recent NATO gains at sea have decreased the numbers of warships needed to maintain control in several regions. Many vessels from these regions have rapidly been reassigned to escort duties to better protect the convoys. Much needed arms, armor, and men from the United States to the United Kingdom. Uh, so the game does have a bit of a, dy a dynamic campaign where each mission sort of has a carry-on effect to the following mission. Uh, you can see here, intelligence has disretained a pattern of movements to deceive enemies. Oh, so we're still in the same, it appears we still have the same mission. 
Primary objective, look at and sink enemy replenishment tankers and tenders. Secondary is to sink enemy submarines. So we haven't received any new orders. But if we go in here, we can see status report. The periscope is damaged. The hull, or I believe, is destroyed. The hull is at 88%. Stores were down. Well, still 12 Mark 48s in reserve. We fired off three that were in our tubes, so we're down from 16 to 13. Um, we should probably be more aggressive, right? Uh, and we fired off one of our eight harpoons. Um, so, so far, so good. But I do think it makes sense to pull us back and head back to port so we can fix our damaged, uh, damaged periscope. And, you know, improve the status of our hull as well. You can see enemy surface vessels are moving along the coast of Norway. Uh-oh. Lost ground in West Germany. West Germany. Soviet armor keeps pushing the front line further into West Germany. Civilian casualties increase as long-range artillery and ground strikes and ground strike aircraft make broad-scale attacks on assumed NATO pre-installations. In this week's edition of International Defense Journal, General McGillan, U.S. Uh, Army Reserve Europe retired, writes on why neither side can claim to be winning. Control of the Atlantic is still an even contest between the Soviet and NATO fleets. Okay. So those Soviet naval vessels are, are making some aggressive movements. I wonder if they're going for Iceland. It would be very Red Storm Risings if Red Storm Rising if they were. We're returning to port. This is kind of annoying how I've got to navigate through here. This is stupid. I've got it just hangs me up on that. This is dumb. Hangs you up on the damn islands. How do I return to port? How do I return to port? Um Okay. That is my home port. This is Holy Loch. Apparently I can't just do that. I'm assuming those Soviet, uh, why can't I, like, how do I get into port? Anyway, West Germany lost. They have total control of West Germany? Good Lord. Parliament's dissolved and the government handed over to occupants. In the national broadcast, West Germany's PM ordered the country's armed forces to cease fire and avoid further casualties. Oh, boy. So, oh, God. Uh, apparently we have a new sword on contact, vicinity of the Faroe Islands, the British, or the, the Soviets may be coming to attack, I'm not sure, uh, this island that we're at, um, apparently surface vessels of some kind, I'm assuming they're warships principally given the fact that, uh, I don't think they'd have replenishment ships this far out. Give me a minute to take a break guys, I'll be right back. I guess I was supposed to click the anchor button next to the port. Again, that's a side effect of me not uh, not knowing the game when I'm starting. I guess we'll have to fight this next battle with uh, limited, uh, you know, a weakened warship, but we'll, we'll see how it all plays out. Again, I'm going to grab a new drink, so bear with me one more moment.
All right. Hey, Paul, I don't want to hear anyone mourning the death of the San Francisco. We're not dead yet. All right, guys, just give me like 30 more seconds and then we'll be good to go again. This game is a lot of fun. All right, so let's set the distance to 10 kilometers. Let's go ahead and man our battle stations and move on. 10 kilometers makes you really restrained in that, you know, they can be on top of you without, you know, you being any the wiser. Let's see our ships beat up a bit. Shit, we're cavitating. It'd be nice if the game didn't start you off cavitating. You can see here our weapons are right where we left them, too. Put a second harpoon in there. We're going to put another torpedo in here. So I have one tor two, tor two torpedoes and two harpoons, just the way I like it. Just the way it, I usually played in fast attack as well. But you can see right here we are, I believe, probably below the layer. Uh, we're already being pinged by sonar. We're, we've got a contact right on top of us. Oh, enemy chopper, that's for sure. Okay, guys, well, let's not die too quick. Let's try and identify this S1 contact here. I'm guessing it's a destroyer or something like that. Oh, maybe it's an alpha. It looks like an alpha to me, guys. What do you think? If you hit enter and you, you pick the wrong ship, like if I say it's a victor and I hit enter, see, it classifies it as whatever I want it to, right? That's my only issue, is I can classify it whatever I think it is. Could be, it's probably actually an Oodaloy. Based on this, it looks almost like an Oodaloy as well. The map did say it was a surface vessel. You are absolutely right. Or not surface vessel, but it was a surface fleet we're up against. Uh. 
Why do I see a cruise missile? Did that thing drop a torpedo or something on me? Oh, yes, it can. Oh, shit. Turn. Oh, boy. Oh, I didn't mean to surface. Shite. I kind of meant to not do that. I kind of meant to do a noisemaker. <laughs> Whoops. Decoy, decoy. I hope it has enough time to get away from the sub. Oh, shit. It's already acquired me, hasn't it? Go in low. Go in low. Well, we're dead. For sure. Get the fuck down. Head flank. Get back in the water. I just Dallas the sub, by the way. Where is this thing? It's coming right for us! Noisemaker down! Turn! No! Oh boy. Level off. I can't do anything with my ballast. It's permanently set to up. Still equilibrating tanks after emergency blow. So we're going to be right back on the surface in a second. Ah. Uh... And the reactor's damaged, so I can't generate power. Oh my god! R.I.P. me. I think I'm dead. Yeah. Any chance my torpedoes hit anything? I don't see anything out here. Ships had to be close. Oh, look at the oil 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 stain from my decrepit sub. Where the hell were they shooting me from? Pretty sure my uh, torpedoes are just out for a stroll. They definitely were surface vessels, though. Yeah, I'm only playing on normal difficulty, and I'm getting my ass kicked. Granted, I don't know what I'm doing, but still uh, not easy. All right. <sighs> USS San Francisco lost with all hands. I was right about the ships, though. They were a Callan and Nudloy. We made it five days into the war. And there you see the wreaths. <sighs> Defeat in Europe. Warsaw Pact forces continue to drive back NATO by op opening a new major offensive this morning. Meanwhile, Soviet naval forces have been effectively cut off the North Atlantic convoy lines, leaving NATO forces in Europe with little hope of reinforcements. Bomp, bomp, bomp. UK blockaded. Soviet naval forces have taken the initiative and now dominate the Atlantic and Norwegian Sea. Transatlantic resupply convoys struggle to make the journey, and escalating loss of material and men at sea makes it only a matter of time before they stop arriving altogether. 
Currently in exile, the political leadership from the occupied territories have voiced strong concern over the risk of the Iron Curtain being brought further west. Fears of permanent occupation have sparked a refugee crisis with tens of thousands streaming toward Western Europe. Iron Curtain draws over Europe. Hundreds of thousands of refugees flee toward the English Channel as the red st stain of communism finally dominates the continent. In occupied Europe, it is rumored that many from the middle class and academia are being sent to re-education camps in increasing numbers. The Soviet occupants have doubled down on security in response to what they claim are actions of subversion by capitalist enemies. Due to the economic and military strain of the recent conflict, analysts remain concerned that the Cold War climate could escalate and persist for decades to come. Worse yet, the recent clash will no doubt justify future expansion of military expenditures by both West and Eastern nations. Commander THG USS San Francisco SSN 711. Five days at war, one mission accomplished. Two warships sunk, one merchant sunk, three ships sunk total. 5,400 warships tonnage, 11,140 tons merchant ships tonnage, 16,590 tonnage sunk. There was little hope for you and your crew. The twisted remains of the USS San Francisco have come to rest on the seafloor, a lasting monument to all those brave souls who served aboard. Is this like the actual highlight of my death? Or is this, oh no, I was going to say that's like exactly how I died. Um, okay. Man, this game is difficult. I will say that. Ooh. All right. Um, well, I'm going to keep trying. <laughs> this game is inspiring me to try more. Uh, but I think I am uh, probably done for the night, guys. I'll probably chop this up, put this on my channel, as pathetic as it may have been. And uh, continue streaming. Maybe I'll stream again tomorrow night um, around the same time. Uh, but so far, so good. A lot of fun, but difficult. Uh, I hope to have a better grasp on the game by the next showing that I give you guys. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll stick around in the chat to answer questions. And uh, thanks again, guys, for tuning in. Until next time, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out. I'm going to go ahead and end the stream now. Uh, I hope you all had a nice night, and hope you tune in again next time. Until next time, guys, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.